Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the basics of vocoding. Super useful skill, it's how you get that robot talking sound. You get some really cool growl sounds used all over the place, movies, films, songs. It is a really useful technique, but it can be very intimidating when you're starting out. So for the vocoder, I will be using Vocodex. Now, what I'm gonna show you though, will work with any vocoder. We will not be doing anything that is specific to Vocodex. I just wanna show you how to set this up. So we're gonna load Vocodex on an empty channel. I am loading it on insert two. Depending on your DAW, you're going to need to send audio to this insert. Now Vocodex has some really nice ways of talking to the channels, but to keep things as general as possible, I will be using left right encoding. This has been in every vocoder I've ever worked with on the software side. Um, I've never gotten the privilege of working with a hardware one, but I imagine it would probably have that as well. So we're gonna be using that just cause it's a little more everywhere. So what is vocoding? Vocoding involves two signals. There's the carrier, which you see right here is labeled carrier. Looks like the word car, but it stands for carrier. This is the sound you're gonna hear. It carries the modulated, the modulator, the modulating sound. So this is the modulator. You do not hear the modulator directly, but you hear the effects of the modulator. Now, the way I think of a vocoder is the carrier has a bunch of frequencies. You want your carrier to have a lot of frequencies. When those frequencies line up with frequencies in the modulator, it is allowed to be heard. That's, that's it. There's more detailed explanations, but if you can understand that concept, it works pretty well. So imagine this carrier is like white noise. It has all frequencies, right? Then you talk. Well, your voice doesn't have all frequencies. It only has a certain number of frequencies that are gonna resonate. So it's only gonna let those frequencies come through the white noise. As a result, it'll sound like the white noise is talking because it's got the same frequencies as your voice. Now, the reason it sounds different than your voice, because why wouldn't it just sound like your voice, is because vocoders don't have, the way we take the frequencies out and let frequencies through is we use a bunch of filters. So say we have like 50 filters, each one representing a narrow band of frequencies, like frequencies 50 to 70, frequencies 70 to 90, 90 to 130, 130 to 180, you know, we have a bunch of them. Well, when our voice comes through and the white noise comes through on a filter, if it sees both signals, then that filter lets the signal through. Um, if it does not see, if the carrier doesn't have a frequency, there's nothing there for the carrier to let through. And if the modulator doesn't have a frequency in a, in a particular band, then in that band, uh, it won't let the carrier through. It'll stop the carrier. So that's why it sounds different. We've reduced how many frequencies to basically these little frequency bands done with these filters. And uh, this is where the um, term vocoder comes from, voice encoder. So that's a little bit on how a vocoder works. Now that we understand how it works, it shouldn't be too hard to actually set one up. So the way left right encoding works is anything you pan to the left and then send to the vocoder, that is going to be a modulator. And anything you pan to the right and then send to the vocoder, that's gonna be a carrier. So I've got this here recording. You can do this in real time. There's a ton of plugins that take advantage of this sort of a thing. Um, it says, I think I'm gobsmacked. I think I'm gobsmacked. So we're gonna put that down. And we are going to send this to a channel right here, right? And then this right here is our vocoder channel. And let's go ahead and color it like neon blue or whatever so that we can, we can see it. So there we go. Now, right now, it is going out to the master. When you're new, the routing can be intimidating. We need to route this to the vocoder. Now, at this stage, if we hit play, we should not hear anything. Um, with this vocoder, you may hear it if it's got some default options. So you see how this has already been set to one. 
Um, and when we routed it, we're before, I wonder if it'll update if we actually take this off. Yeah, it goes away. So this right now is routed down the middle. And so if we play this- I think I'm gobsmacked. It's its own modulator and carrier. So, and the reason it sounds weird is because it's, it's those freaking, those filters. So theoretically, if it had infinite numbers of filters, it would just sound exactly the same. But because it doesn't, we get this kind of down resolution thing. Anyways, the, re the reason we're hearing sound at all right now is because it's working as both the modulator and the carrier, because it's routed down the middle. So it's got left channel information and right channel information. So we need to make it so that it's only left. We're going to use this as the modulator because this is going to force the carrier to sound like uh, the voice. And that's typically what you want. You could flip the relationship and have a synth playing as the modulator. That's gonna be very boring. Whatever has the motion, the, the signal you're interested in, uh, making sound cool, you generally want that to be the modulator. So if you have a voice and you want the voice to sound like a robot or something, you're gonna want that to be the modulator. So I've panned it left now. So now it's just the modulator and we should not hear anything because there is no carrier. And if we hit play, there's nothing. Now there is, this vocoder in particular has a consonant option here. We're not gonna get into, or, or noise. So you wanna add noise typically back in because um, it helps with the clarity of certain words. And we're also gonna turn the wet all the way up. And we'll bring the high pass all the way up. We're gonna ignore the last little bit. That's kind of like a fancy extra bit. Other vocoders won't let anything through. It depends on the type of stuff they have. If they support like additional sounds for like S's and, and T's and things like that. So now that we have that set up, um, we need a modulator. The modulator has to be sounding at the same time in order for us to hear this. So when you're picking a modulator, until you get a better vibe for the matching of things and things you can do, uh, you generally want to pick something with an extremely broad amount of frequencies. And so we are going to go with a saw wave. That is a pretty great one. So I'm going to grab an instance of Harmer, load it up. This is just a synth that's going to produce a saw wave. I'm going to go to the default patch just to make sure I'm on that. And I'm going to turn the volume down because it's very loud. I want to show you our input here. So I'm going to have it play a note. We'll have it play a low note, and then we'll have it play an even lower note. And we'll actually put a gap here because I want to demonstrate an important property here. So we're gonna put this pattern down. Now, when these line up, you will hear a signal come through because they, when they line up, they are going to have um, there will be a modulator and a carrier, and when they match, they're gonna let stuff through. Here, it's missing a carrier, so nothing's gonna be let through, except for those little consonant bits. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have another uh, matchup, so we'll hear stuff, and then we'll hear stuff at the end, but there's not really a lot going on on the voice, so we won't hear all that much. And so, if we play the pattern, if, you, if you're uh, in FL Studio, right, this is missing the audio file. So we won't hear anything. But the other thing is we also need to route this. So this is gonna be our carrier. Why do we want this to be our carrier? We'll look at how many, look at this, a ton of frequencies. So things will have stuff to match up with. The carrier will share frequency bands with parts of the modulator. So we're gonna send this to a track and we are going to route this. Again, we only want it going to the vocoder and we wanna route this right because we choose left, right encoding. So this is gonna make it the carrier, okay? So this is, the, this is the big part. So when you route it, you route the modulator, pan it left, and you route the carrier, pan it right. And anything routed right, we could add more channels, and as long as we pan them one way or the other, that's gonna determine what they are. Uh, generally, you only have like the, just two, one for each, right? So now, when we play it, we should, Hear it. I think God. I think. 
And there you go. That's the basics of setting up a vocoder. We could have um, it do a cool bend. So this is the synth we're messing with here. We could have it bend down. I think I'm got back. And maybe even hold that note. I think I'm got back. I think I'm got back. I think I'm got back. We could have the synth play higher. I think I'm got back. We could change elements of the carrier to change how it sounds. We could change elements. Oh, this is uh, the carrier. So we could change the synthesizer, basically. And that's going to change the frequencies it can match against. We could also change the modulator, which is our voice. And that's going to change the frequencies it can match against. And by changing them in interesting ways, you could sometimes get some really cool sounds. The other thing that we haven't even touched is all the stuff the vocoder offers you. So the vocoder itself has a certain number of filters and they determine the bands of frequencies that it's looking at. So if you do less, it sounds a little more vintage, a little more retro because older vocoders had less filters. And then you could go up to much higher amounts. Some vocoders go to the sky's the limit number of filters. Uh, you For vocoding, you typically don't need a lot. As you go higher, it tends to get what I refer to as a glassier texture. I think I'm gobsmacked. And as you go lower, you get that more like, think Daft Punk. I think I'm gobsmacked. So you can hear the difference. Now, you might be wondering, vocoder, vocodex, what's special about it? Well, it's got all these abilities to mess with filters and parameters and things that you just don't typically see. There's a ton here to unpack. It's really complex. Uh, but on the surface, you can do a lot just with this. This opens up so many doors. And after you hear some of the sounds that can come out of these things, you begin to hear it everywhere. And you realize that a lot of production, uh, especially when you've got like robots or something involved, has vocoders behind it doing that stuff. So that's the basics of setting up a vocoder, getting one running. Hopefully you'll feel confident in conceptually how it works. Um, you feel confident in being able to set one up, and I encourage you to try all kinds of things. Try voice, try drums against a synth, try swapping the synth and the drums, try swapping their roles, try messing with some basic band parameters. Increase the number of filters you're using, decrease them. In this case, it says bands. I've been calling them band pass filters or just filters. Um, try changing the nature of the filters. This is the order, so the cutoff of the filters. Um, you have all these controls, but just try messing with a few general ones. Get a vibe for it. You can make some really cool stuff with it. Try looking up some dubstep music. I guarantee you'll come across some stuff that eventually has a vocoder in it. Uh, if you want an artist that uh, uses vocoders quite often, Bad Computer has quite a number of super impressive sounds um, that are have. I am I'm pretty sure use vocoders just just off the air. I'm not 100% sure, but they sure do sound vocodery sometimes. If you have any questions, free to let me know. Subscribe to that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Like,